Hey everyone, welcome to FMA Talk Marshall Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Tim, and this is my dynamic co-host. PG Ty's here. And uh PG Ty is on the road. He's down in Texas, everybody. Um, yep. so if you're down there, uh you you still got more events going on down there? Yeah, I've got something to do a small thing in Stephenville in a couple few days, and then I got a whole weekend at our friend uh Raymond Montoya's. Oh, there you go. Friday, and all, you know, here we go. There we go. Already. And so Jeremy so wins. Uh, I don't know. We we'll were start. we were we were stalling. Uh, so um, here's the deal. So PG Ty is using his he's remote, so he does not have the technology he normally has access to. Uh, I plugged into my Ethernet cable, so hopefully I'm going to have a lot better signal than normal. And hello, Eric. So we have Jeremy from. Uh, northern ontario we have eric who's coming into us from uh, don't tell me um portland oregon <clears throat> there we go and we'll see whom else oh and here we go and then we got brian coming in from erie pennsylvania hi brian nice all Excellent. right so so uh today's topic is going to be about i don't know what, what do we say what, oh why modernist became so popular okay um, but before we go down that route, you know, first of all, please do us a favor, wherever you are watching this, if you can go to the YouTube channel, there's two of them, uh, you know, YouTube forward slash Datu Tim or forward slash Tim Hartman, um, and like subscribe and feel free to, uh, hit the notification button and feel free to share this wherever you feel appropriate. We want to always thank our hosts or I mean, our sponsors, the Modern East University, um, as well as the uh, uh, Vulpus Training Blades. And, of course, they've got that premier new series, the Datu series, the Datu Tim Hartman series. No shameless plug there. Actually, I don't get anything from it, so it's all good. It's, it's just the ego stroke. Um, and then our feature event. Um, well, <clears throat> we have the feature event, which is... May 20th through 22nd. That is the Modern Ernest Universe or Anniversary Camp for 65 Years of Excellence. And um, the one we're going to be talking about is the Triple Threat Seminar, Triple Threat Baby, that's happening at the end of this month in Middletown, Connecticut. I'm looking forward to that one. And that'll be when you say Triple Threat. Well, is, it, is it threatening? No, it's not threatening, but it is three people having a good time. So we've got... Two brothers and then a, a, a stepbrother. So you got the two brothers, Ty and Frank. They're both students of a very good friend of mine, uh, Eric Alexander, and myself. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, the, I'm the ugly stepchild. <laughs> and the cool thing here is all three of us have the same story. We started some, but with somebody who was with Remy. In my case, I left... Um, your case, both you guys were passed up because Eric moved the, you know, actually kind of similar. John was getting out of the art and, uh, and I, I, I had some issues with some things that were going on in the club. Um, <clears throat> and we separated ways and Remy reached out to me. And then with Eric, Eric moving from Connecticut out to Colorado, he put, um, he put, um, um, Frank in direct contact with Remy. So he passed him up and he did the same with you trained, trained you. And then he actually passed you up to Remy and Lyman is saying hello from Albany. I'm assuming that's Albany, New York. So he was at the Florida camp and then he went to yep. Indiana and then he went over to, um, uh, Detroit. So he's a road warrior. I thought I was the road yes. warrior. No, yeah. no, although I, I flew down. So, so I go to this, the movement summit conference, had a good time. There's a, a Marshall business thing in Suffolk, Virginia. And lo and behold, I get home. My alternator blows out. I'm stuck at a gas station waiting for a tow for five hours, but I made it home. And here's Jackie, Jackie, how you doing? Hey, how's that new job going, Jackie? Did you, are you uh, working yet or are you still waiting for that time to start. So um, we'll hear from her. She's reaching out from uh, 
She's Missouri, right? I know she cheer, cheer, cheers for KC, yeah. so, you know. <laughs> but that's yeah, it. no, was, I mean, no. I'm out in this little mini texture uh, uh, feeling that I can slouch next time. And... Okay. So, um, so <clears> like home. I said, Ty is on the road, so, so let's not expect. Um, oh, here we go. Lovely. Here's a good one. Started Friday, the same day I got oh, diagnosed wow. with COVID. <laughs> good thing it's worked right. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Good thing you can work from home. Well, heal up quick. Yep. So, um, so everyone, hey, you know, can someone give me a shout out? What do you think of my sound? I know Ty's Ty's got some issues. Well, Ty's got issues. Ty's got some issues because he's on the road. <laughs> there's, um, there's always that. But let me know what you think of the sound on my end. Um, if I need to move the mic closer or not. You know, <clears throat> I don't have a dedicated. Com- well, I. I have my laptop that's that's for this, but I use it for everything else as well. So I'm always setting up, tearing down, setting back up again. So um, it's always a pain in the derriere. Oh, so um, I'm gonna have this little logo. This will be my. I'll be like Cyclops, but different here. And here's Ty again. Oh, and then um, there we go. There we go. So, um, Lyman says, sounds good. Mr. Sweeney from Texas. How you doing? Thanks for that. Brian says, I'm good. And, uh, your audio is good. Uh, just, yeah, just my audio. You can hear you fine. Hey, como esta ca? Very cool. Yeah, I'm A from all the way from the Philippines saying Hello. Um, most excellent. Okay, uh, it's like so the, at least you're good. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but uh, but uh, if I fade in out, just uh, I'll I'll be back. Don't worry about it. Maybe we don't want you coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be, be back. Yeah, he's the Terminator. Tie the Terminator. <laughs> so, um. <clears throat> So um, let's start with a couple things. So, so you know, so while we're here, okay, now we're going to do an episode on seminars. That is going to be one of the ones we're going to do. Um, Mabute P. I'm assuming that's Poe, but that's okay. <laughs> People. Uh, People. Um, so tell us a little about the seminar, because we are going to do one specifically on seminars, sort of like uh, an adjunct um, episode, one that would dovetail into the FMA Professionals episode I did. But um, tell us a little about the tour. Let's see. The last three days, I've been doing different things. So in Lufkin, I did a nice seminar, I thought. It went really well, actually. A really good. Uh, well, the first one was in Houston. I went down, visited uh, Master Ed and his group. Uh, and, you know, he never brings in external people. So I was uh, pretty honored to uh, be invited there. And everybody seemed to have a great time. So mm-hmm. maybe looking forward to maybe doing something again. But we... Uh, we had a good disca- a good exploration of Bolintawak concepts and crossovers with sort of an, a modern East eye. And we covered not only the grouping type stuff, but also some on call stuff and some uh, some scenario based things out of uh, a Stig and Bua. So that was that went real well. And the next day, very next day, I drove up to Lufkin, went and saw my friend Adam Coates from way back in the day and his group. And we had a really cool place out in the in the forest next to a lake. And we oh, covered uh, before we for two hours. We started two hours early and started with some knife concepts and did some single stick concepts. And then the seminar itself was uh, empty hand combatives, pine and toucan, that kinds of thing. Nice. Uh, and that went really well. We had some uh, former law enforcement folks. We had some people training all sorts of different things. I had some even some old kung fu <clears> friends. <throat> um, both of those, what, 12 people on the first one, 17 or so people on the next one. Lots of good feedback. But this sort of tale, tales what you're talking about that, you know, my teaching style is uh, somewhat different than some people's. Um, but it's the idea is focusing on people uh, having fun, relaxing, doing, you know, working hard, but having fun. So they learn as good as they can, but there are lots of other ways to do it too. Uh, and then yesterday I did a seminar uh, at uh, David Beck's, you know, our friend that helped us do the camp uh, and had eight people 
including Chester Brown. Oh, okay. And yeah. didn't, didn't you have someone stop by and say hello? Yes. He, he, uh, so I haven't seen uh, Grandmaster Anding de Leon for, gosh, decades. Um, but he took the time to drop by and visit and watch the class for almost an hour and a half or two, so half of the time. Um, and we're going to go out to have lunch tomorrow, so we'll catch up a little bit more then, too. Nice. But that was, well, that was really hello. cool. That was really cool. Yes, I will. Um, and again, we had a good time there and, and a lot of different folks with different backgrounds, but we, we all were able to play together, work together. And, uh, you know me, I sneak in a couple extra stuff for the advanced folks. Mm -hmm. And I did at the very end, split that one up a little bit just to make it less uh, distracting. But yeah, I, I had a blast. So, that, you know, this is making my vacation really. So appreciate it. But yeah, I think this will talk dovetail nicely when we talk about, you know, doing a seminar. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm not letting you get out that easy. So um, my friend, What's that? I heard something big happen while you're out that way. Oh, yeah. So before all that, I, I oh. taught a bunch at my Kung Fu Touch instructor days, a bunch of uh, classes, adults <clears throat> classes in Kung Fu, but I also shared on these class. And of course, yes, I did. Uh, he asked me to test, so I tested, uh, and I got promoted to Kung Fu up to eighth degree. So eighth degree, that means, all right. Uh, I never have to do it again, but uh, it's go. nice to have that vote of confidence. All right. And uh, Rich just says hello from Grand Blank slash Flint. Excellent. Lots of, excellent, lots of excellent. good folks on here today. I'm, I might as well just go away. <laughs> so um, good to see you. I want to, I wanna, this is going to be an ongoing rant of mine. It's always an mm -hmm. ongoing rant. Came up again. Uh oh, I'm being invaded here. I, I got my. Uh, a lap dog, my 170 pound lap dog just showed up. Nice. Oh, even more kung fu, ma kung fu magical stuff. You, she okay. usually says a different word when I do my magical stuff. Yes. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I gotta give someone some love in here while I talk to y'all. <laughs> so um, all right, my rant, and this is uh. I want to make sure it comes out the right way. A, a, a lot of a lot of times it doesn't. It, this one's a little not a black and white situation. Oh, you got a you got a fuzzy one. There you go. Um, so it's my sister's dog. There we go. I've been uh, one of the one of the things that's been irking me as of late is um, judging people. By the minority, or giving credit because of the minority. So, um, I so uh, as of late, uh, we've had this discussion on more than one occasion, and it's come up. We're going to do an episode on sparring, and actually, Craig Mason is going to be part of that. And we've done math already a couple times. And we figure, you know, we talked about, well, modern Ernest doesn't fight. And we'll talk about that in the future. That was going to be one of our episodes. Um, it's just, it's not, it's not, not me. That's wait, wait a second. I thought Remy was modern Ernest. Right. So Remy was modern Ernest, right? So. Well, Remy was Arnie's modern there, Ernest. Plus, 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 plus. So, you know, and actually I, I wanted to, going, man, but yes. on, on the show, when I said that, um, Joe Rebello says, well, don't tell that to Doug Pierre. I go, I will tell it to Doug Pierre. Okay, I'll tell it to everybody. Modern East doesn't fight. Remy didn't build Arnisadors. He built, he made people better self-defense players. And if you count the number of people that fought in modern Arnis, I mean, what, 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 how many people do you think Remy had? What would you think the peak it was when he was alive? Um, Globally. Now, the Philippines didn't count because he was gone. And he was reconnecting mm -hmm. with the Philippines. But how many do you think we had globally? It would have been thousands, I think. Uh, about how many? Thousands. Thousands? Okay. Well, I mean, you figured Dieter Global had... People. Yeah. Dieter himself had 1,500 when he joined. 
Yeah, you know, I'm thinking probably around seven, eight thousand people. Do you think that's a a fair yeah. number? Yeah. So you make it a round number, like five thousand. There you go. Yeah. So I mean, because you look at things like you'd have like Michigan could have a hundred people attending, but people weren't bringing all their students. You know, and then you go to another camp that have sixty or eighty. Another camp that was 60 or 80. And there might be like 10 or 15 people at all those camps that were the same people at the end. You know, a bunch of us would go. I was more of a seminar junkie, but I mean, I did I did 30 camps. But, um, you know, like a lot of the guys started going to as many. They weren't doing the seminars, but they were definitely doing the camps. Um, you know, so... Um, I wasn't doing the same quantity of camps per year that, like, okay, if we look at the Mots, you take the seven of them, um, Kenny, Chuck, Jeff, and Jim Lattice, those four really put a big effort to going to as many camps as possible. And of course I lost tie again, but as I'll continue saying, even though they went to as many camps as they could, um, and he's back. Or is he? Oh, he's back. Can you hear me? To tie. All right. Everybody, tell me if it's me or if it is the tie. I think it's the tie. But, you know, um, we shall see on this one. Um, are we there? Can anyone uh, log in and say something? Because Ty is frozen. I don't know if he can hear me. Can you hear me, Ty? It's Ty's connection. Okay, that's what I thought. So, you know. <clears throat> yeah, Ty, poor audio and, yeah, frozen. Okay. So, um, basically... Yeah, and he's gone. Okay, you know, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna change my, I'm gonna change my brand banner here. I'll go here like this. Okay, that's gonna be a little better. That way, when it goes in and out, it won't uh, mess up with the uh, thing. Tim Hartman video audio is five by five, five by five. Okay, so <clears throat> I was going somewhere with this. Okay, so like those four guys, they really. At the end, they were really going to as many camps as they, they possibly could. But that was over a short, you know, only a couple of years where I was doing over much. But even to take a handful of them, let's say you had them, maybe there were six people that were going to trying to go to all the camps. So the bulk of those people, bulk of those camps were, were, were all unique people to that region. So if you figure there was like 5,000 People, I we were talking. Rich and I were talking about this the other day. We talked about said like seven or eight thousand people, and we had maybe a hundred people that fought, and most of those were my students. That was like, that was like, you know, one percent. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, if you thought, well, actually, what's you know, um, no, it was a little over, it was like two percent. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Okay. Sorry, got, no problem. I got rid of some of the the banner things because the the modern East logo kept going in the middle of my forehead. <laughs> that seems reasonable. I could be like Cyclops. That's right. Now this should so, be better. I'm on the two G network, so okay. Help. So, um, Rich and I talked about this on the way home the other night. We figured it around eight thousand people. Hey, Sam. Um, if we had eight thousand people, hundred people fighting, that was like two percent, right around there. Mm. Um, so two percent. You know, one out of 50 modern Arnese practitioners. That's probably being generous, yeah. given what I saw. You know, um, so modern Arnese as a whole does not fight. There's people who fight in the art, mm -hmm. but there's a different. Just like Renee, Renee Kokolo said the other day, you know, the, the one episode goes, you know, I've, I've always gotten support from modern East people. I'm like, no, you got support from me and my group. So Renee would do events. I would attend. Craig would event would attend and, and people from our group would attend, but there's three groups in modern Arnis in Toronto in the greater Toronto area. Mm. And I'm pretty sure if we named the groups to him, he probably hasn't gotten support from any of those groups. 
So to say that I get support from modern on these people is not the same thing as I get support from Tim and Craig and Steve and, and, and others who happen to do modern earnings. Hey, Craig, we're just talking about you, Craig. Talk about how you and I support Renee and, you know, and then the modern East community got credit for that. So, so, um, on the one, on the one show, someone tried to claim Manny Pacquiao is an FMA or, you know, and I'm like, no, he's a Filipino doing combative arts. He's, he's not the judge of what the norm is. He's the exception. So it's the confusion of a Filipino doing martial arts must be a Filipino martial arts. Yeah. Well, and, and remember up until recently, until the Arnis bill passed, most of them were doing karate and Taekwondo and they probably still do. Mm. Hell, what we, when we, when we, the last time we were there, where do we see it? What kind of martial arts school do we see in a rental place across from the supply company? It was a Taekwondo school on the yep. second floor. Yep. No Arnis schools. The only the only Arnie school that I know of that has a dedicated brick and mortar location just for them is Riddell de Gux, and that's on his property yep. where he does his sticks. Yep. And part of that he stores his sticks there too. So it's not just uh you know, it's just not that, you know. So um so my my thing is, you know, where people try to take credit for something or oh you look at we're with them and like, no, these people did it, you know, just like we don't want to, uh, you know, like, okay, so people are, have some prejudiced opinions on things. And maybe it's people from a certain country. Uh, maybe it's people from a certain skin color. Maybe it's people wearing certain law enforcement uniforms, fill in the blank. And just because a couple people, you know, my father was a state trooper and people in the, in the, the, the neighborhood or, you know, his community, they loved him. You know, and as a cop, he was fair, but he'd be the first one to tell you that there's some bad cops, but we didn't, but a lot of times people don't ask why people are bad cops. And if you, if you've been around long enough, you realize that sometimes the job changes people, you mm -hmm. know, there's a high infidelity rate there, substance abuse and suicide rate in law enforcement, let alone them being shot at by people. Just something a huge to think stress, about. huge stressor for sure. Mr. Rocky, how hey. you doing? Hey, Rocky. So, um, and then Rocky will say, because this is my rant, I uh, will just finish up my rant. Basically, Rocky, I said, modern these people don't fight. Um, and we'll <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> I probably just opened up a can right there. <laughs> there's there's people in modern these who would fight, but I was actually Definitely. talking about how you know we have to be we have to be careful when we judge a group by its minority, you know, any and any, any and that's what we talked about, you know. We can go racial on this. We can go cultural on this. We can go, we can go uh, profession on this. You know, in our system, you can talk about, hey there, Tom. We can talk about different types of uh, martial artists. You know, listen, you know, Taekwondo is probably the most practiced art in the world. And yeah, with those numbers, you're going to have quality control issues in some of the in some of the big cookie cutter schools. But you know what? I've also some of the best martial arts I've met out there were Taekwondo practitioners. So, you know, and we usually take, we usually make fun of them, you know, take one's dough versus the, and the partial art because, well, you know, we're jealous that they're better business people than we are. <laughs> but I want here we go. What's this? Uh, I reached the Twitter space interview. Uh, I asked FMA, did he do any FMA? He didn't. Oh, there you go. And Sam, here's the, he's the take one's dough guy, but he doesn't know how, but he doesn't know how to take the dough. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we have two uh, two good. Uh, well, anyway, there's there, there's a lot of good TKD people out there for sure. Yeah, we know. Definitely. I was just thinking of, of of Rondi and Christine and all sorts of good people. Hey, Rondi! Oh my God! I mean, she went to Shaolin Temple. She does all this stuff. Mm -hmm. She's done stuff with us, and people talk about her, you know, because she had probably the biggest freestanding Taekwondo school by that we've ever met. And you know what? Mm -hmm. She she was quality martial artist. You, you can know, be both. You can do quality martial arts and quality business. I, you know, and that's it. I went, I, so this week I was at a business, um, business seminar, a uh, summit in Suffolk. Um, Brandon Belicio was there who was, this, uh, who, who does modern earnings. It's in his, it's in his DNA. It's more of a hybrid because he's a, he's a student of Greg Alamany, who's a student of Remy Prices. Okay. 
So, um, and, uh, and then the Maya people were there. Now the week before I was down in Orlando and I wanted to look at all the Maya school, the championship martial arts schools. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was so impressed. I'm watching these kids work out on their own, working out, doing five forties and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay. And I was, and I was, it was uh, Mike Metzger was uh, the guy gave me the tour. And I'm like, okay, so I look at this. I go, wow, here you got a, a, a very professional school. You got over 200 students. You're making a good, and, and the school that we're, I was in was a very profitable school, very profitable school. And you got good quality people on the floor. I mean, some people, you can, you can sit there and argue, well, I would never do this. Okay, so you don't like their martial expression, but the material was rock solid. And these were kids. I mean, I saw an, a, a, a 10 year old rocking shit. I'm like, damn. Excellent. It was like Shia. You know? Okay. Eric. Oh my God. I haven't heard from you in a long time. <laughs> Eric uh, is probably the, he's Mal Moni, Mal Moni's uh, best training partner when it comes to demos, in my opinion. Right. He'll also wear a Lucha Libre mask when he does it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And Mr. Franco. Good to see both Dimprinco. You. Dimprinco. Uh yeah, see both of you this month. Uh Dim Franco. Hey, uh <laughs> we'll be at the event. Hey, uh, how did you you know well we should we have to have him on the show too, but uh, he just did a camp over or he was at um um what's his face's camp? Um Chad Bailey's camp. Chad Bailey, yeah. 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 So he's down at Chad Bailey's camp. I still gotta make one of those. Yeah, I, evidently everyone was there. I saw uh, pictures, and well, not everybody, but uh, I saw Dan and Bram there. Yep. So I'm going to shut a door and see if that shuts him up. And Bruce, too, and yeah. You're done. Yeah, I got to make one of those eventually. Looks like he got quiet for me. Good. All, All right. right, so, you know, that's just a little slot side here. You know, I what I don't like, and maybe it's just about me, but I see it with other things too. Is like, I love how people take credit for someone else's accomplishments. Oh, we fight. No, I fight. Mm -hmm. We've done this. No, I've done this. Mm -hmm. um, you know this? I go like, well, no, you've done none of this on your own. So shut up and stop talking about it. <laughs> I went last year. It was awesome. Okay. But she hasn't come to Buffalo. Got it. Okay. I, I see how it is. I see. I see how it is. <laughs> Whatever, whatever. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Uh, I'm gonna put throw Stephen under the bus. Stephen Swinney is is trying to work out how to come up to Buffalo that time. Nice. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm off on my tie right. So uh, today, well, this actually be, be part of today's thing, but um, the today's thing is how did modern age become so popular? <laughs> I got one word answer. Is it one word or one name? Yes. <laughs> yes, it may. This may. Hmm. May 20th through 22nd. That's the 65th anniversary camp. All the cool kids will be there. Yeah. And even us too. And that's right. You know, I've got uh, three of my current students going, and plus, uh, like I said, Stephen, and I'm trying to see if Abel, we'll see. His, his knees are killing him. Okay. Well, <laughs> no comment. I'm, I'm, I'm doing Chad flashbacks here. Chad, our Chad, not the other Chad. Our Chad. We awesome. got to keep our Chad closeted because if he comes out, he'll be. I was, we got to uh, keep, keep him locked away in a chest because he'll, people won't know what to do with him. I was channeling his dark side during dinner today. Oh, where are you? I can with my sister and her family. <laughs> Uh, your family's got thick skin. They can handle it. Yeah, yep, exactly. They know what they're dealing with. It's it's the tie. Um, Excellent, Stephen. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to get something going here. If I can, uh, I don't know where it is. Ay vey. I've got something I'm looking for. I just cannot find it. Um, oh, I know where I can look. So, anyways, um, Andy Norman from Spain too. Thank. You. Good to see you. Oh, let me get over. I'm just catching the catching the comments since you're checking things. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on here. Uh, so I know. Oh, is that? Oh, dude, Andy, Andy, brother. I haven't mm -hmm. seen you since the um, hmm, the New York convention. 
Well, you, you weren't at that one, were you? The New York City DL convention? Uh, no, I've never been to a DL convention. Oh, it's good. All right, there you go. <laughs> It was good stuff. Good stuff. Andy, Andy's got a unique look at martial arts. When you come down Thursday, we'll tag team. Okay. Ty, uh, what is the one word? Okay, we're going to – hold on. We're, we're about to get into it. That's right. Uh, you, I'm doing – how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> um, and, and we got to get the uh, – one. yeah, when, once this gets the, the shit going – you know what? I, I think I'm about to go to Spain if that's where Andy is. What the hell? Andy, we should do so. I'll come out there. We'll put something together. How's that sound? And then we got to get into the show. So, you know. <laughs> Let me see. How long have we been at this? 31 <laughs> minutes. Although, I'm going to blame it all on you and your bad connection. I'm sure. Why not? It works for me. It keeps me out of the, out of the bad side here. Yep. So, so, um, so, okay. This is what I was looking for. Andy Norman. Um, We've all had great journey. Um, have a fabulous chat. Yes, come to Spain. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over. So we will answer Dean's question. Okay, I got to do it this way. So, Dean, um, this is for you. Well, actually, this is for everyone. It's not for Dean. It's for all of us. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, tell me, brother. Why do you think monitors became so popular? Remy, it's all Remy, baby. All Remy. I personally think he is the most instrumental of all the people out there for the Filipino martial art world. When you think of the big scope of what he's did, getting the art into the school system. I mean, who's, I mean, that right there, boom. Yeah. Right there. He got yeah. it in the school system. Well, oh. his, he was so charismatic, right? He got a lot of people to carry his message as well into big, at the time, what was social things, right? All the magazines, all of the ads, all of the word of mouth, all him. Yeah. So um, now there's, there's more to that, that, though. There's a lot. There's a lot to that. <laughs> we, we can't just say it's all Remy because, I mean, there's like, how did Remy do what he did? And I think, I personally believe, it's one of, if not the most misunderstood of the Filipino systems. Trip to Spain. Craig says, okay, he's all in there. And he goes, uh, well, honestly, Spain is waiting for you. Uh, I'll send you my personal mobile. To <laughs> done, 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 and done. Once, uh, once things get better on the traveling side of my side, you know, I'll, we'll definitely put that together. Um, Heck, I might be up for that, you know, Yes, and and the is. thing here is, so um, I might be doing a fast track trip to the Philippines. So we're going to be doing a camp in the Philippines, and I need to see who and what is left after what COVID has done to the country or the repercussions of that. So I don't want to bring people there, and then all of a sudden it's, a, it's not safe mm -hmm. or uh, subpar – um lodging and stuff like that and you know so i need to make sure everything's good so let's see here um I'm trying to do two things at once here so because the old man never tried to put the art above anyone else he showed them how it worked with ever within the art oh, yep yeah. yep 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 and yep again i think it's you hear, you yeah that, Rocky? you're right again understood but that's a that's a big part of it. But yeah, there's just there's that people connection. We'll get into all of this, I think. Yeah. So uh, first of all, let's talk about. I think the big thing. Okay. So which ties in to the next thing? Tie in. Tie mm -hmm. for the tie for answer. Or thank you for the answer. Right, right, right. I like tie. Uh, out of the, all the interviews coming on modern East. Is consistently mentioned his persona, you know. But I think the other thing too is his approach was different than everybody else, and I think the combination. Okay, listen. Okay, no quarterback can win. Can win. Okay, no one player on a football team can win without the rest of the team. You know, and and Remy had so many different aspects of things that he was doing, and. Like, I'm going to say this. Like, why is modern East so popular compared to the other Filipino systems? Now, I think there's two things here that we have to think about 
beside you, we have the man, and then we have the methodology. Well, going to about the rest of the team, he enabled really good people to do their parts, oh, yeah. right? Why did I get into this as deep as I did? Eric. Eric is an awesome person. Yep. A, a key player. So we, there were a bunch of those. Yep. 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 Um, now I've got, I'm, I'm a little out, outspoken about certain aspects and we'll get into that. So I'm, are you, no, I haven't heard that before. You haven't heard that? No, no, no. So, um, well, be, be prepared. <laughs> it's, time to, it's time to let, okay. Let these golden lock, all oh, these white locks fly. Here. <laughs> so here's the deal. Remy had a system. He he could he could. Remy didn't teach people what he wanted to teach. He taught them what they needed to learn. Okay, works. <laughs> Lol. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You know, you look at the big scheme of things. Remy didn't. Let's start from the beginning. He didn't open up a school because if I open up a if I open a school in your town and you have a school, now I'm your competition. Mm -hmm. But what I could do, which I think is the strength of modern East and the downfall of modern East, is that I could teach you how to improve your base system with Remy's program without compromising the integrity of said system. So it's the art within your art, which is awesome. The problem here is, though, without a standalone school after he passed away, it's not it's it's not a surprising that we lost so many people because right. all they did was say, well, uh, he's gone. He was the reason why I was there. I don't do this as a standalone program, so there's no reason for me to open up a standalone school. Right. Well, there's so, another effect, too. If you're if you're teaching in a seminar or even camp method, you're the you're the outside guy coming in, in a sense to all these people that are hosting you. And when you say something it's different than the very same things that everybody's instructor has said. And you're showing it in a wow way that they haven't seen before it hits home and you can en end up really uh, hammering it home uh, effortlessly. If you've got the goods and he had the goods. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he played on that to a T I think. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the downside with that though, is because it was done the art within your art, mm -hmm. he depended on some people that really were not qualified to do stuff mm -hmm. in his name. You know, the problem here is, okay, and I've had people say, well, Remy was this mass mixologist, and he was this, that, and that's the, that's the secret of modern East. But the problem is, he was, when, when there's, when you have someone representing a different blend, you know, like, let's take someone who does Kempo. Okay, they do Kempo in our niece. They will not have, for the next tier of people, they will not have the same things to offer them that Remy offered that those guys. Oh, and look at that. Bing Go was his name. Oh, B I N G O. Okay. Thank you, Rocky. You know, when you take a karate Arnie's guy and a Kempo Arnie's guy and a Kung Fu Arnie's guy, no, not you, uh, then a Jiu Jitsu Arnie's guy and we're all this other stuff, they're blending things. So now they've got this hybrid program, which is great. And it talks about Remy's, the art within your art, and all this other stuff. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very awesome. But the problem you run into is. Now, who represents what Remy was blending in with everybody's system? Right. You know, when you're if you're if you if you're doing vodka based drinks and you run out of vodka, what do you do? You can put something else in, but it's no longer the same. Right. It's really tough to get the vodka out of the screwdriver when you need it for a mule. We like mule. Yep. I gotta find. I'm I'm deleting some things because I have to. I have to put a new file up because we lost somebody. We'll want to be talking about that in a minute. Uh, well, not in a minute, but so I think Remy, like I said, Remy was this master mixologist. Unfortunately, the people who would then represent him afterwards didn't have that same blend, you know. And I mean, that was, I think that's one of the reasons why I was so successful in the seminar series. That's how, in essence, that's where our connection is because Eric said, he, I'd ask them, you know, why you want me? <laughs> he goes, well, I'm going to work with this guy, and he wants to put as much Tai Chi in this as possible. <laughs> Sweeney switched to Jameson's. Uh, you know, um, we uh, we shared, we we talked about that just the other night. You know, you and Eric? No, no, me and Stephen. <laughs> oh, oh, my mule. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
So, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, that's that's the aftermath. But let's talk about this. So, what he did was look at what you had. Let's let's talk you know, the why why Remy got so popular. Mm. One, he didn't teach a full system. Some of us were lucky that to specialize in the system, but most people didn't teach the weren't taught a full system. What they were taught is aspects of the art. Now uh, we've talked about this. I and I, I think why. Because actually this weekend I'm doing, I'm going to be on Dean's show Sunday night for uh, professional FMA schools. And one of the things I'm going to talk about, you know, like, and we've talked about this on the show here, complete and standalone are two different things. Mm -hmm. You could have a complete field of study. You can do a complete field of study on archery. You can do a few, a complete field of study on handguns or on long guns or on whatever. But do you have a standalone program? So do you have a program that what you do is when you run out of ammunition? Do you have a program that if what if someone comes at you with edged weapons? Do you have a program? So we do stick work and we do blade work or defensive tactics against. Okay. What happens when we don't have a stick in our hands? And what most people will do, their default would be go to the primary system. So they completely ditch modern or Remy's mm -hmm. teachings. They're only there to use it for the weaponized encounters. And the rest of the time they're going to do their, you know, karate or Kempo or jujitsu or fill in the blind. I mean, do you think I'm off on that? No, no. And it's, 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 and there's an extent to that and there's a blend, right? Everything is spectrum, but yes, I think, I think the general trend is right. And we can talk about, I mean, and listen, People are going to cry foul. You know what? Grow a pair, you know? Whether whether that's testicles or ovaries, I don't give a shit. You know, you got to you, you gotta get past this. I'm not, oh, not me, not me. It goes back to the fighting. We already talked about it. Hey, Rocky, do you think more than 2% of Remy's people fought? More than 2%? We'll see what Rocky says about that. Uh, nope, I can admit. I go straight to kickboxing. Yep. yep. And I don't blame him. He Listen, Jeremy's put a lot of time in his kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't he do that? Right. It makes sense to do that. But the thing here is because, well, I mean, like myself, I trained without a safety net. I had nothing else to fall back on, so I had to make this shit work, which is probably why I have a full-time modern army school, <laughs> FMA school. <laughs> I teach more than just modern there, but I mean, but the thing here is I teach a lot of stuff that's all interconnected with the art. Right. It's not like I said, well, I don't have, uh, you know, there's no connection. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do my modern Arnis and then I'm going to do, uh, um, I don't know, fill in the blanks. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, my uh, Dikiti Tertia, because I have no blade work whatsoever. And then I'm going to do um, Sikaran, because I don't know how to punch and kick, or I don't know how to kick. And no, I had all that stuff already. Remy had a great, Remy had a whole package. And some people say, well, this comes from this. It doesn't matter where the shit came from, because no one had original thought in their damn life. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Korean martial arts. The original patterns were Shotokan patterns. They were not Korean. They were Japanese. Boom, drop it. So all you Taekwondo people out there, if you've never heard that, <laughs> I've had to disqualify a bunch of Koreans complete, competing in the Korean division doing Basai Dai, which is a Shotokan Kata. It's like they're trying to say Gumdo now is come, it's that the Kendo comes from Gumdo. I'm like, stop the bullshit. <laughs> kendo sword fighting, that Kendo, Japanese sword fighting, that came first, and then Gumdo is a copy of that. Well, as they, far as I'm concerned, everything's kung fu. So, yeah, what the hell do you know? <laughs> All from India. There Some people even say Egypt because they found hieroglyphics. Ah, see, I've got the research that shows that the uh, Bodhidharma influenced kung fu, but not bring it. I'm going to go with uh, uh, primates. There you go, aliens. And, well, ultimately, I mean, we've seen the we've seen the sky. That's right. We, and, you know, Eric von Däniken. Well, it depends on what color, because you have the green ones that did the Egyptian and the gray ones that did the Mayan pyramids. So that's right. Yeah, you know, completely different. But 
Anyway, but we digress. <laughs> That's right. We do. We never do that. Never, Albert. But here, you know, the, the thing here is that when you're doing the art within your art, it's within your art, which means you're basing it off of something you've already done. That means everything from the ground up, which is a great way to get the word out, but a terrible way to keep the art going. I think what that boils down to, right, is that basically he was teaching every individual to make themselves a, like you said, a better martial arts. There, That was a personal art expression interpretation in, yeah. you know, combination for each person. That is not a standardized system. That is hard to pass on if you do it that way. Boom. Now, why is it why why is modern more popular than Serata? And uh, and just you know, I'm gonna there's and I'll say Serata because there's less of them out there, and I'm not worried about them trying to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a lot of Serata friends. Yeah. At least they say they're my friends. We'll see. <laughs> um. Greg Hiltz had some interesting commentary from his, uh, yep, from Korean Styles. Very good. I like Greg. Yeah. I'm waiting for this one thing to drop. It's still downloading. Um, so, you know, that's an example of a system that I don't think is standalone. You know, it was very specific. You learned it the way it was taught. Mm -hmm. A bunch of arts, you know. You could take a lot of arts that this is the way you do it. Okay, let's see what the what the man is saying while I pull this up here. Oh, yeah. My glasses are not helping me here today. Can you see that or you look on your phone? I can I can see it. I'll read. Uh, so Rocky says, yeah. not in the early days. So this is the early part of the conversation. Not in the early days because he was against it. Uh, it was one of our first falling outs when he found out I was playing with my PTK friends. By the time you got involved, uh, Tim, somehow you did it and changed his mind or something. I begged people to do it in the 80s. And Remy always told people not to entertain me. So however you did it, congrats. That's, I think, with the spar or the fighting. Yeah, that was answering that question you asked him directly. Um. Okay, if that was... Okay, so... Yeah, I think... Okay. Yeah, I think more people are involved in the fighting beca now because of you and guys like Andy and Doug I, and whatever. Well, I mean, post-Remy doesn't count. And if you... I mean, to be honest with you, and even if we talk about Remy... Or even we're talking about modern or niece, okay. I don't count the Philippines because they're more under sport our niece through the government sponsored as a as a collegiate as a scholastic sport. We don't have that here, so we wouldn't, you know. And how many people are doing modern or niece or just attached to modern or niece? Because um Tanette, when we were, you know, the the Panay that we were I was sponsoring over there, her and her sister came over, you know. So she was being recruited by different teams, and she really she had some modernist influence, but it was more of a just the, like when I talk to the, uh, the the Filipinos who are part of these teams, they go, "We just know how to do the tournament. We do right. not, we do not know the art. We just know how to score, and that's a whole different animal, you know." Yep. Don't want to say boxing is not an art. Boxing is a very specific set of skill sets, and mm -hmm. it can take a lifetime to master. So you, I would definitely throw it in a martial art category. But it's primarily geared for sport, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I mean, and and when I see boxing clubs, it's all about developing, you know, it's about building character and stuff like that. But it's all about competing or fitness. Mm -hmm. Actually, what happens? You generally have your your ten. Uh, you got like two hundred members of the boxing gym, and um, but only fight five or ten fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's what Ron Browning used to always tell me. Yeah, Tim. I'm only going to have a handful of fighters. The rest pay the bills. Pay the bills, and then some of them are fodder. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think, you know, probably Rick, uh, Rocky, um, I fought no gear, live stick, and we stopped real quickly <laughs> because it hurt. We didn't use helmets, but we didn't do headshots. Right. Okay. Then Rick... Bong Soon, Bong Hernellas, Rick Bong Soon Hernellas. He was the one that got me. He, he gave me my first set of padded sticks and homemade helmet and stuff. Okay, let me see what he got there. Also, uh, I say Dighton, right on. I mean, fencing helmets, light gloves. Okay. Much padded. Uh, you could get it. Yeah. 
Yep. No, I get you. I have the same uh, oh, preference, yeah. Rocky. Yeah. I I so I like so I used to make my own padded sticks, um, and they would hurt. Oh, here, I, here's the thing though. Okay, so we use the hit sticks by Action Flex. They're amazing sticks. They have some kick to them. Yep. You know, but when we're in the Philippines, I can't believe the level of wisdom over there. <laughs> like Craig and I are there. I mean, um, actually, no, you were there too at the time. Yep. So. Were you there when they started showing us what all when when uh you know actually you may not have been on that trip yet. No, not that one. Mm-hmm. Tungsten was showing us all of the gear that was required. Right. And like here, let's each, they gave us the sticks. So I smack we're smacking each other in the leg <laughs> ourselves with the sticks. Oh, these are good. I can handle that. That's a good pattern. It was whippy, but it had a little sting to it, and it was just enough. And it was a it was a real thin rattan cord stick. <laughs> I just signed in, signed on. Hello. Would you consider modern ace more self-defense than doing it? We're in the middle of that conversation right now, Chris. You should five minutes ago. You're, so we're talking about fighting in modern ace, and we're gonna talk about what the art is as a whole. So when they gave us the stick, we're like, oh dude, uh I'm using this. Yep. And then Craig, there you go. He goes, Yep. We hit ourselves in the legs. Okay, no problem. I'll take this. And then they they have a chest protector. Okay. And then they got an arm protector. And then they got a leg protector. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? Oh, you know, the parents are like, this is the Philippines. This is supposed to be. Man, when did you guys become such wusses? And we actually hit each other. Now, I don't know what it is with the stick fighting. Because when I was with Sikaran, like the world championships in the Philippines, they wore next to no, they wore helmets. Hmm. And they had kid. I mean, they had kids going out in stretchers, but no one was crying foul. It was like, hey, just a part of the sport. Well, you need you, know? you need feedback. Um, if you ignore if you ignore the, ignore the feedback and the accountability, then how are you going to get the lessons it's going to teach you? Sparring with consequence. Yep. Any kind of training, you need to have consequences to your actions. If there's none, then you. But Chris, uh, Chris, quick answer. I'll just say the former, uh, but we'll we'll explore that later. That's my answer anyway. Yep, self defense. But you know, we're we're going on that path. Yeah, but well, so we're I, still supposed to be talking about you know how it got so popular. I think we're sort of talking around it, but, but well, I think this is part of it. You know, okay, we got into fighting, but why why is it so popular? I I, I think is because Remy focused on the tech. Okay, well, huh. well, he also made it accessible. Yeah, I um, I would have the kids wear helmets or the adults wear helmets too. Well, at least, well, okay. First of all, Jackie, I'm just going to give you a little business advice. Okay, so, and and so for those who don't know this, I was t- I was for a short period of time the commissioner for Stick Fighting World, which was which was cage stick fighting in Canada, except they took down the cage and they put up acrylic walls. It was pretty cool. Well, they're using a weak calf helmet hmm. with live sticks. And you could do punching and kicking, choking each other out, stuff like that. Except. Yeah. But then the one the one person said, you know, you should think about using fencing helmets, even though they're not designed for that kind of use. And I sat there, I go, that's the point right there. They're not designed for that kind of use. And when you talk about insurance and lawsuits and stuff like that, people will cry foul. Well, you know, no one cares if you signed a, whatever you signed. At the end of the day, you know, negligence is negligence. Now, we use the Action Flex. I have them made direct. I get the hit series. And I make sure we're on a fascia. What kind of sparring were you doing with uh, our Chad when you cut his forehead open? <laughs> uh, no uh, headgear of any sort. What kind of sticks were you using? Padded sticks. Padded stick, cut his forehead open. Jackie, you may want to think about wearing helmet. Twice on one hit. Okay. Padded stick. And you weren't even going hard, were you? No, just fast. Okay. And the the thing here's the problem with the padded sticks. Okay. The foam breaks down and no one replaces them as fast as they should. So then you got a hard plastic end hitting you in the head. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. Um, Those are two separate things in my mind. I okay. Well, it's either you're doing sparring or you're not. So what are you doing? 
Because I don't, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying there. Because here's the here's the thing, Jackie. It doesn't matter who's doing all out. <laughs> Anybody can hit the other person hard, real quick, real fast, unintentionally, and hurt somebody. Uh, they're pricey, and we don't spar. Yep. Okay. That's why everyone should have their own gear. One, and you should wear a helmet because <laughs> two. Um, now your stick was in pretty good shape when you hit him in the forehead, right? It was, but uh, you would have had to do a close expect inspection to see that 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 padding was very close. Um, but it didn't help because what happened is I actually pulled it, and so it bent, and then the edge hit. You know, I as a multi-decade veteran okay. owning okay. a school, I wouldn't take the chance with my business, my home, my anything. I am insured. I just I was just at a group that didn't have insurance and been work been working for that. Okay, so listen, everybody, if you're in the United States, Francis Francis L. Dean and Associates. It's about five, four to five hundred dollars a year, and you can have insurance. It's well worth it. I, I don't get sponsorship for that, but here, when you when you're starting to do anything, when it, 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 yeah, no. And the other thing here is, you got to you got to spar with proper gear, even if it's semi sparring. My were the most painful shot I ever got was a stupid. Okay, so Century used to make, yes, no insurance. Filipino martial art group, you know, it's crazy. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people don't, oh, well, we're not going to get hurt. We don't need that. So, um, you know, and you know, here we go. You want to know another reason why uh, modernists got so big? They didn't spar. <laughs> well, no, it's in the book. That's part of being accessible, though. Right. It, you know, listen, okay, I'll tell Rocky, listen, Rocky, I sparred all the time. It was internal. I mm -hmm. wasn't going out initially. I just fought. So Remy never gave me shit. He would see our guys fight each other. You know, and really I Buffalo Buffalo was only a modern Ernie's town. Only 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 recently did other arts come into in Buffalo. And even still, there's well, there's there's one there's one Pikiti group in Buffalo. Actually, it's Pikiti uh, and Kali de Leon. Okay, and that's it. I always protect the melon. Yep. So, so Remy let me do stuff because well, because I was doing it internally. I wasn't sparring outside. It was you know. So I think maybe it's because the people you were playing with, maybe Rocky. I don't know, but. And getting back to Chris's, uh, I think what Remy Remy didn't attempt to teach a fighting art. Some of us he showed more to. You know, I, uh, I mean, why did some of us excel faster than others? Because we committed to the craft. Because we did it as a standalone program, or you trained it as a separate art, not as an add-on art. I mean. Um, how many people have we had uh, on the show and they, they all give us the same hybrid training program mindset when it comes to open hand combatives, right. you know, or, or like, well, we do the open hand interpretation of this movement. Okay. So you do block check, you do trapping hands, which is the open hand interpretation of block check counter. Got it. What else do you do? Well, I do the single Sinwali application. Okay. Got it. Now you got two things. And where do they get the rest of their open hand combatives? Oh, that's for my karate or my taekwondo or my kempo or my jujitsu or mm -hmm. whatever. So they're not teaching the art as a standalone program. But I digress. Actually, I'm well, digress. so talk about it. making it accessible, right? One of the things we do with the uh, Sinawali is that they do know as part of the rest of the art using those to help edge them into some pad focus mitt drills is, I think, a really good way to. Yeah. To link those together and it worked really well two days ago for me well there you go you know there's so much that there's so much connecting material but you know if you took what remy taught us you wouldn't need another system mm -hmm. now need and want are two different things 
you know, when it comes to cars, <laughs> what do you need? It needs to get you to and fro, hopefully comfortable climate, and be safe on the road for, for you and everyone else. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that we've done all that, it'd be nice to have a Mercedes or a BMW. You know, but do you really need that? I mean, I've got a I've 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 got a Dodge Grand Caravan, and I had to put an alternator and a battery in it today because I blew uh, in a new belt, so that cost me seven hundred dollars. Okay, so uh, it's a twenty thirteen, and the only thing I've replaced on it is tires and brakes, hmm. and the wipers. Okay, and then of course oil change and stuff like that. But I mean. This is the first big mechanical thing. And actually, it's not even that big because the other thing was you know, I had the air con- I had some air conditioning issues at one time. I had some stuff. But, I mean, this this car owes me nothing. But I, mm-hmm. lo- I actually, it's comfortable. You've been in it many a times. Mm-hmm. It, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, yeah. would I like something high-end? Sure. That's why, that's why I got my pony. I need a Mach 5. You want the Mach 5? Yeah, I need the Mach 5. We, we got to recolor it. I don't like white with the red stripes. Yeah, that's true. It shows the the well. I mean, any car, any either black or white is going to show the color up really. Or, or maybe I'd take Racer X's car. Racer X's car is pretty cool too. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, but yeah, need versus want. Got it. Yep. Um. So, I think Remy had a system of training people. No matter who you were, he had all the bases covered. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I think that's why. One of the, you know, first we got personality. Then we had, and here's another one. Why, why you had the leader who was always leveling up his skill. And more importantly, he was leveling up his student skills so he could actually show what level skill. He, we still don't know how good he was because no one was good enough partner for him to demonstrate his stuff at the top tier. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read, we're going to read this right here. And then I'm going to talk about um, my experience in uh, Germany with him. So Remy had so much more open open hand early on, but I think maybe it conflicted with the mainstream arts that he was um, bringing him in. Uh, Crisada D'Amato is pretty much a dead art now, but Remy pretty much taught the whole art um, within modern Arnis at one time. But um, I think it um, was causing conflict. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, how did Remy develop his seminar circuit so quickly? Okay. Uh, well, I think that goes back to his, his personality. It starts off with that. Well, I, I tell you what the big thing was. He moved from the West Coast to the East Coast because there's too many Filipinos over there and very spread out and sparse over here. I mean, and, and, and think about this. Okay, what is the closest point of entry into the country from the Philippines? That would be California. That would be Seattle. That would be the whole West Coast. Mm-hmm. So um, it's crazy. That, like, if you're in the Bay Area, man, it, it's crazy the amount of Asians over there. And usually, you know, like, you know, when I hear in Buffalo, there's a lot of Asians here. But there's not many Filipinos here. And... The quantity, I mean, it's 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 refreshing to see that many Filipinos outside the Philippines, you know, uh, same up in Toronto. But when he moved to the West Coast, we are so spread out. You didn't have all these Filipino systems teaching over each other or conflicting with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think for a lack of competition over here, his dynamic personality, his ability to do pretty much anything. I mean, I man, I've seen him do kata. I've seen him demonstrate bits and pieces of kata, and it wasn't even his kata. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had him throw kicks like a point karate guy, and anyone who's who had him grab a limb of his when he does his uh, dumag dumag slash <laughs> jujitsu, dang, okay. And and for those who make the relationship, there's Droopy Dog. Mm-hmm. That was Wally J. You made me mad. And then there was the Tasmanian devil, which was Remy Praces. Mm-hmm. So think of all that good technique, 
with explosive attitude and um uh and a cruel streak <laughs> or a mean streak. <laughs> yeah. um uh, he's he gave information he gave which a lot of I call, which i call pain right pain is information uh, he gave a lot of pain a lot of pain so um i think um that and now the other thing too is you got to remember this is what he did for a living so he constantly was hustling the seminar thing. Now we do a seminar. Once you get done with the seminar, what's he do to you? Hey, Ty. Well, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> Ty, how are you doing? Oh, this this is a wonderful seminar, don't you think? So, um, should we? Uh, we should do next year, same time. All right. All right. Boom. Boom. Not only, not only that, he'd say, and you will be at my next one uh, six months in the town nearby, right? Yeah, I will see you. Yeah, you will be there. You will be there. We will all the um, you know go together. And uh, so, and then he hooked up with Wally, and uh, uh, pain makes believers. Yep, <laughs> yes, it does, Lyman. But I mean, he he hooked up with Wally. He did the big three. The Remy Wally and George show, well, George and Kim, and uh, my God, that was uh, it was crazy on how big that thing got. Mm -hmm. And Remy would be booking seminars left and right in front of all of you. I mean, you know, I don't think Remy's physical expression, which was amazing was the same as the touch. Absolutely not. We, and we've talked about that before. It's the, it has to be felt and seen firsthand. And no one, I mean. Which is, sounds like a cop-out, but I mean, I, there's no way to describe it. There's no cop-out. I mean, listen, anytime we still throw Wally J, you know, okay, Wally J, small little 120-pound dude. You're like, what the? He, okay, for those who haven't seen Wally J, he used to do a finger lock without grabbing. He would palm your finger. Right. Which Remy did to me once, but he had to run around to do it where Wally didn't have to walk. I'm like, Remy's like, dude, this this is the guy. I'm like, you know, with his, his way. I'm like, looking at him I'm like, and I met him. I actually drove him up to Rochester and I threw, so I'm throwing around, but I'm like, okay, so it was my time. And so I met him before I did the seminar with him. Great. And finally, right. he, he grabbed me. And he threw me. And I'm like, how the hell is this little speck of a person throwing me around this way? I'm like, my God, this this is this is crazy pain. What the hell's going on? Yep. You know, I'm like, no, this can't be true. And I kept going back for more. You know, because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> but I'm like, no, there's got to be a trick. Yeah, he trains his ass off. That's the trick. Every time he was walking his route. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he kept leveling up his skill set. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So he had the right idea big time. And he's constantly working with other people. And like in Buffalo, the last time it was in Buffalo, um, April, 2000. Mm -hmm. April 2000, I think it was. We go, uh, while Dr. G's on the floor teaching yoga, uh, you know, a version of it, you know, stretching. And lo and behold, Remy grabs Jason Arnold and Remy's on the floor working out with us. And I've seen him on the floor during Wally J seminars. Let's see. Remy loved to grapple uh, for a man that walked like Fred Sanford. <laughs> it was amazing to see how fast he could move. Um, <laughs> yes. Like you said, the Tasmanian devil. My yep. father and Remy spent hours and hours grappling and eating ice cream. Uh, he uh, he was unbelievable, versatile, and I wish he showed more. And, you know, we can talk more about this, Rocky, when you're on the show with us. <laughs> we got to schedule that one. But I'm pumped. Hey, Darren. And we're serious. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not going to let go of that. He's going to be on the show. Yep. Whether, yeah, I don't care if he's screaming like a little baby. He's going to be on the damn show. 
I don't think he'd be screaming like a little baby. Uh, you don't know Rocky the way I know him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just, just just teasing Joe there, Rocky. Rocky's got better firearms than I have. I think he's got more firearms. He's in Michigan. That's a militia, right? That whole state. I don't know. I don't know. Michigan's weird to me because I don't know it. Yeah. Oh, hey, are you going to that camp that we talked about that's in Michigan or uh, JD? I can't remember. You know which one I'm talking about, right? No, it's not drinking a, ringing a bell. Yeah. Oh, um, I haven't double checked that, but I thought it's doable. So maybe, probably, hopefully, yes. And Rocky admits to being a screamer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> more, more TMI, man. TMI. La la la. I can't hear you. <laughs> Actually, I got to stop reading it. That's right. Um, no, I, I think the reasons. I mean, listen. This is part of its its personality. The other part is physical ability. He was one of, he's, he's probably the, for someone who grew up in the Philippines, he is probably the most organized person teaching Filipino master from the islands that I've ever saw. Which people don't get. They don't get that. They don't understand that. I mean, we, we've gone to the Philippines a whole bunch of times. My God, what a shit show it is when it comes to structure. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys have got amazing, like uh, Arnold Narzo, mm -hmm. he, man, spot on. Yep. I like Riddell the Guck, really good. But there's a lot of people over there. There is, it's it's like you're rolling the dice. Let's roll. Yeah, let's see what we're gonna work on today. Boom. Oh, disarming. Let's roll roll another one. Here we go. Oh, uh grappling. That sounds good. <laughs> and there's no cohesion. Right. No story. You know? And and like when I went to Europe for the first time on my own, those guys were shocked on the level of they liked the progressions I had. Well, my progression mm -hmm. started with Remy. Mm -hmm. And then I I built it on the Western teaching platforms that I've learned from going to school here. Uh, another note, I'm calling, uh, I'm calling it a night. Okay. Yeah. Have fun guys. I'm sorry about the bills next year. The bills versus Matthew Stanford. <laughs> Is that sports ball? I'm not sure. Well, the, uh, <laughs> it's sports ball. It's what? Yeah. We're talking sports ball. Okay. And you go for a, you go for a goal. Okay, all right. And a home run. <laughs> there we go. Why you headbutt it? Okay. Now I'm starting to like it. Yeah. Uh, there you go. There you go. Similar to rugby, but different. <laughs> so, um, no, I think I think the big thing is we start off with the basics. It was person uh, seminars are personality driven. Mm -hmm. Modern Arnis was a whole seminar experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, but I mean, you know, and there was a difference between the seminars and the camps, I would say. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think because, and it go like, okay, how many, how many FMA seminar instructor? Okay. First of all, no one did the, no Filipino martial artist did the quantity of seminars that Remy Praces did. That's what I know. It's not even nobody, close. nobody, you know, and Asano had a good thing, but a part of it was Jeet Kune Do as well. But he would do a two-day seminar. Okay. When he did seminars, they were mostly two-day seminars. Because also the instructors, because here's the thing he did that you had to pull X amount of hours a year to keep your teaching creds up. Remy didn't do that. But Remy would teach two seminars. Like, you know, when they first came to Buffalo, before I started taking over hosting them, He'd fly in on Friday, do a Saturday seminar in Buffalo, and then Sunday morning he'd fly out and go to Connecticut, do a seminar there or somewhere else, fill in the blanks. Yep. Uh, Buffalo Bills knocked out of Super Bowl run. Matt Stanford is the quarterback from the L.A. Raiders and was the recent good QB from the Detroit Lions. Okay. Or GB. That's probably Sounds like uh, rocket surgery to me. Yeah, okay. So – um so Remy did like what fifty seminars in ten camps a year, some ungodly number like that. Yeah, I remember adding it up, and it was it was like that. You know, fifty seminars, fifty seminars. That's twenty five weekends of the year going to two cities, and he mostly did that. Mm -hmm. So then he had another fifty twenty five. You no, know, actually, 
So that, then he had another 26 weekends to choose from. Right. Well, sometimes he did three on a weekend. I can think yeah. of one favorite, one of my favorite ones where it was three, one Friday, Saturday, Sunday, boom. Well, there you go. In different parts, in, in other areas in the country, it'd be different states. Yeah. And then he did a whole bunch of camps. Let's, let's see mm-hmm. the camps in the year. So um, in, in the year, so let's say 2000. Jeff did a camp in Texas and then and then Randy did the or you know not Randy Al. Al so those right. are the two Texas camps. Well, plus Dallas sometimes. So Dallas it used to be well, I'm talking two, uh, 2000. There was only okay. two. All right. All right. All right. Then you do Joliet. Mm-hmm. Um there's another camp there. That was a winter camp. You would do uh that year uh 2000 Bruce Chu did his camp. So Florida-ish, somewhere in there. Yeah. It was Orlando, yeah. yeah. Richard Roy did a camp. Terry yeah. Warren did a camp. Um, yeah. So there's six right there. Gabrielle did a camp. That's right. And then you would do... Uh, Tucker Georgia would do a camp. That was uh, Bob Quinn. So there's eight camps there. He went to Tunisia. There's yeah. nine. I think he did a camp in Mexico, 10. I think that was all 99 or 2000. But that's a pretty typical year. Yeah, that was a typical. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know. And I think, there was, one less. I think there was more. Yep. I was going to say, some years were more for sure. You know. So, um, so 10 camps, at least 50 seminars. You know. And then, you know, he'd be talking to people. And then, he, and what, and here's the other thing. Here's the other thing that modern is, made modern is popular, in my opinion. Uh, I think people like Eric and myself. Now, wait for it. Here we go. Because Remy would encourage people to have us at two seminars. Oh, you should have Tim over. You should have Eric over. You should have fill in the blank over. Mm-hmm. You know, he would do all of these, you know, and. And would follow know, up on it. Because when he found out I came up from Eric doing that, then he was super overjoyed and happy. So it. Know. Both sides of the equation. You know, he encouraged people to do. I mean, I was doing 15, 20 seminars. I think I, I think we figured out the, the 2000, I was doing 20 seminars at that wow. time. Wow. Now, I don't think anyone else was doing that to that extent. I think, I think basically you'd have people do one to three seminars a year. Yep. And then there was me and then there was Remy. I think I in 2000, I, I know I did three. Yeah. And I'm not trying to. I wasn't, I wasn't doing seminars. That's what but, I would say. But he was encouraged me to go to Canada and do stuff like that. That was a whole KM chapter of the IMF yep. Yep. and all this other stuff. He, he, it may have started off a little differently until he, he got established because, you know, he was so poor, he didn't want to risk going that path. And after he got to know people and all the things he understood, about making better business decisions, including happen. Hey, listen, I want to do a seminar here, but they're not ready for me. Let's send Tim in. Hmm. And, you know, ready could be, or, hey, listen, they did a really good job. Send Ty in here afterwards and do something hmm. to reinforce. Oh, I thought you were going to say to ruin them, but okay. Yeah, well, you could do that too. <laughs> it's a twofer. A twofer. There you, there you go. But, um, no, I think um, I think a lot of times, you know, I don't think. See, here's the thing I remember. Once again, like I don't judge. We talked about my tirade, you know. I don't judge a person based on one decision he did. I look at all the decisions he or she did, mm-hmm. and I know. Okay, here's one. Do you feel? I I, I got in this, into this with someone recently, and I got a follow up. Do you feel that? There was a certain after you were vetted. Mm-hmm. There's a vetting process. Would you say there's that with Remy? Definitely. And whether you decide it's formal, informal, it doesn't really matter. But yes, okay. there was he 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 had his uh, places for people in his mind. Okay. So after he you went through the vetting process, mm-hmm. do you feel that there was a specific formula of how many things you had to do to get a certain rank? Or do you think that may have been the process to get you through the door? Um, 
I think the answer is different depending on which side of that vetting process you are. So for the vetted people that were sort of not one of us, there was a different set of expectations. And for the people that were, you know, more, more connected directly with him or fully on board or whatever you want to call that, something that felt more of a direct connection, uh, there was a different set of expectations. And I wouldn't say it was codified, except he knew exactly what he expected of each person. So for everyone on the show who's watching this, um, Ty and I are all about words matter. So we don't invent terms to invent terms. We come up with terms to put things in better perspective. Would you say that's an accurate statement there, Ty? Or the, or the context that we can work with, yeah. So RPCs is a term that I came up with. Remy Price is certified. So to be a black belt in modern Arnis, while Remy was alive, mm -hmm. you had to test in front of him. He had the he was the only one that could promote the black belt, period. I don't care what anyone else tells you. He's told me this. He's told Ty this. He's told Eric this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, me. I produced, I don't know of anyone who's produced more black belts in rent for Remy than I have while he was alive. He told me this. Okay. Now if he tells me this, the guy who's been the most competent producing black belts out there, quality with quantity. I can't believe you would have told somebody else, Oh, well we can, you can promote the black belt. Okay. I'm just telling you based on the thing here, but I think once he vetted what I was told though, by somebody, well, uh, rank is all based on what you go. You have to do X amount of camps because that's what I did. I go, no, I think that's because it was you. I think maybe because who your teacher was or what you were saying or doing or whatnot, you took a long way. Well, no, you had to see X amount of camps to become a black belt. No, mm -hmm. I had my, I've had several of my people get a black belt at the very first camp they went to. Now, did I have a good PR program? Of course I did. I took, I took my black belts out to see Remy. I told them that they're going to see him at least three times that year. Once in Buffalo, twice on the road. I wanted people to, to see these people and I'd say, Hey Ty, I'm going to, I want you to check out Kevin here. Can you tell me what you think? Hey, I want you to also look at these two other people over here. Cause they're all, they're all testing for black belt. And I'd like to get your feedback. Now I didn't need anyone's feedback. But I wanted to get everyone's support. You know, I wanted everyone to see, you know, that I had solid black belts. I also wanted them to also feel that I appreciated and respected their opinion on things. As opposed to coming and going, uh, no one means nothing to me. My guys are getting black belt. All, you, all the rest of you suck. I mean, they did, but. <laughs> so. If someone told you that they they felt that there was a formula like this, X amount, would you think that that was the norm or maybe someone's specific vetting process? For me, and I and I guess I was lucky. For me, I was on the good side of that vetting process, so that wouldn't that's not the what I'd consider the norm. Hmm. I would see that on the other side of the vetting process, but there's a couple layers of things for that side hmm. as well. Yeah, and you just came from up what I said, Eric. Yeah, you know, so Eric, Eric was your vetting process. A big part of it, yeah. I still had to, you know, bring the, bring the, bring my part to the table. Yeah, you had to do your work. Had to do, exactly. Yeah. Wonder where where'd you hear that from? I don't know. We talk about it all the time. Yep. So, um, I think and. And and Remy removed a lot of objection at the very beginning. Testing, <laughs> wow, at camp it was only thirty dollars. Yep, because you also spent three hundred dollars to be at the camp. Yep. So he just said, ah, for an extra thirty bucks, you can test for a belt. And what if it's black belt? That's ah, still good. At the end, he changed that. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the longest time, for decades, it was like thirty bucks. That was it. You know. Um. So you didn't have to worry about some absorbent fee. So it really made it a lot easier for people to become black belts once they hopped on the program. You know, um, I mean, hell, get a get a black belt in Taekwondo, check, get the bill for that test. <laughs> so, um, but I think overall, I think a lot of this has to do with, you know, Remy made it very approachable. Mm 
mm-hmm. himself approachable. Mm-hmm. I think he had. Yeah, a, I was just to add the other thing, the approachable. That it's it's more than just approachable. Uh, I would add that thing that people, you know, we we probably take for granted. You know, he made every single person at his camp feel special and appreciated, and an individual that mattered at his event, and he was thankful for. It was amazing. He yeah. had. Uh, it wasn't a cult. No. Nope. No, uh, it was a click. <laughs> he had. He, you know what? He was the. He was the. Uh, the walking, well, no, not the walking, the Grateful Dead of the martial art world. You go, you know, you the the de- people follow the dead around for the long, you know, whatever. It's a big family, and that's how Remy had it. Yep. So, um, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so we're talking about things to encourage and do stuff like that. I wanna, because we talked about the <laughs> event of the year. I wanna update it now. For those who didn't hear, I'm going to let you know something here. We lost an instructor, Rick Manglinong. Um, long story short, he has family things that need his attention that's going to happen that time. He's actually going to the Philippines to take care of family business. So he's not going to be around. There is an open invitation. If something changes in his lifestyle, his, his end, he's got an open invitation. But we've we've lost an instructor um, you know, I hope nothing bad happens then on his end to make that happen. But if they reschedule, it'd be, it'd be great to see him in Buffalo. But in the meantime, what I want to do is, is it is our featured event. I want to do the promotion of that event. It's uh, well, let's see. You're so you're just a bunch of deadheads. <laughs> yeah. Better than being a deadite. Yeah. So um, I just want to talk about that now. First of all, Modern East was started by Remy Prasis in 1957. He was 21. His brothers were 11 years old. They weren't there at the formation of the art. But there's no way in hell Remy would have been able to build the art as well he did without the family teamwork. Mm-hmm. So that's why we're including the Ernesto side of the family. Um, we would love to have representation from the Ernesto side or Roberto side. We just don't, we just really don't have that. I'm going to see if we can get him to log on and uh, say a few words. That would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but, uh, at the end of the day, we just, we just don't have anyone over here that, uh, that I have access to now. Why did I pick those instructors? Because I think they are the best in our art. Um, I'm looking at, you know, um, the Comaton side, um, we got Shelly Millsbog and, uh, Oliver Gadoosh and it was supposed to be Rick Manglinong. Solid. Yeah. So we went from the th- three of the best in the world to two of the best in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. And who knows? I'm hoping I'm hoping things can be worked out. Okay. With Rick. But if it can't, it can't, and that's all the way it is to it. You know. On the modern east side, phew, what can I say? You, you know, we got Bruce Jutnick, unless something mm-hmm. unless something crazy happens, probably Remy's earliest student in the American student in the States is planning on being there. That's the plan. Good. Okay. Um, you know, I've got other, I've got, and and now I've got a, a phenomenal first-gen students 
and we're breaking the, the mold now. We're actually going to have second gen students with Craig Mason, who's Phenomenal. who is probably the leading modern guy in Canada. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about Craig, and he'll be on the show in a couple of weeks or a week. I don't know. I'm probably in a couple of weeks. Actually, I'm going to look that up right now. Uh, he fights dog brothers and is candidate dog. So you have to go to this candidate. He'd be a dog brother right now if he would have gotten his international event in prior to COVID. They didn't even, actually, for the longest time, they already thought he was a dog brother. <laughs> actually contacted Renee and said, hey, buddy, um, feel free to make, if, if you're holding off on inducting Craig to be part of the part of the tribe or the part of the pack, um, by all means, you've got my blessing. It's not going to cause, you know, this, that has nothing to do with me. Just don't claim him as a DMMA, which is dog brother martial arts versus the dog brother pack. Right. So he represents us and he does well, him and Jeremy, mm -hmm. Jeremy's not a, uh, I don't think Jeremy's a candidate yet, but you know, and what we got here? Uh, I thought Curtis Goodwin is in Oregon. Uh, I don't know. Curtis has gone off. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know what to tell you about Curtis because, I can't find anything, any data on him. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't, I don't know the last time he's been active doing anything. <laughs> don't have a dialogue with him, you know. Um, and last thing I think he went down to see Sinaway, which was hmm. that was a mistake. But, um, but I, you know, he's I, I don't know. Um, hmm. Also, I just don't know what his status is with Roberto because when we're there, he doesn't talk. Well, we won't get into that. <laughs> Let's not go down that path. Um, and I would say this: Curtis probably wouldn't be his top student. He'd probably be his top American student. Remember, he's got students in the Philippines, yeah. and a lot of uh, uh, the brothers as a whole shared students. So you know. Um, just my opinion on things, you know. Um, so, um, I think this is going to be a great event. Um, you know, I've got you and Chad teaching at camp, which I'm excited about that. And the Williams coming back for a second camp, they were amazing, good energy. Um, yes. like I said, uh, we and got energy and attitude and goods. Yeah. Oh my God. They got it all. They got it all. And then once again, you know, we got our first second gen guy and I will put this staff up against any other modern earnings event up there. I think you will not be disappointed if you come here, you know, um, like I said, I, I said this before, um, the, uh, and I hosted the first reunion camp. I hosted the first one, okay? Those camps have got to go away. We don't need a reunion. Because what happens at, what, what happens to reunions? They get smaller and smaller because people start dying off. Now, whether we die off or they retire or whatever, we need camps that are promoting or producing more students. So reunions are all about, like just like in high school, right? Reunions are about that class, right? And the class is only dwindling. It's not about the art. It's not about the current generations. It's not about future generations. You know, that, that's it right there. You just nail it right there. I mean, this has been my big, <laughs> my, pe my pet peeve about giving people, to, you know, all these latest grandmaster promotions and all this other stuff. How's that helping the art? Mm -hmm. What have they done to get those titles? You know, have you been producing black belts, let alone masters? How does promoting so you know so? How does cheering the high school quarterback for coming back every five years helping that class? The class of two thousand will never grow larger. Mm -hmm. It's the class of two thousand. It will only grow smaller. Every class we have will get small. Any mm -hmm. class you you choose any year, mm -hmm. it's not going to multiply. It's always going to get smaller. But we need to keep producing future classes of, you know, the class of 2000 or like now we have the class of 2022. Okay. Will there be a class of 2023? Will it be a class of 2024? That's what we need to work on. Well, then, I think in that case, it has to become about the institution, 
um, the school uh, in the sense of, you know, the style, that kind of stuff it has to be about that more than it has to be about a group of individuals. You know, this is this tied in also what we talked about leaders versus influencers. You know, it, 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 it all ties in at the end of the day. Yeah. If it's just about you, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I, I'm just doing this because of me. Great. Good for you. But if you want something to continue on, then you need to put into it. For me. No. Yeah, we, uh, you know. I was going to say Al Bundy. He was that famous quarterback. There we go. <laughs> and now, he's a B- all the time. now he's a BJJ black belt. Well, that's true. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tease him. Yeah. But I mean, um, at the end of the day, you know, like we talked about this the other day, you know, there was the art has shrunk a lot. And actually, I mean, could have easily talked in this, you know, the rise and fall of modern Ernest. Remy was the rise and the students were the fall. You know, we need to have an, we need to raise those tides again, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and, and here's the thing. You know, it, it says in the will, we talked about it the other day. That this was, you know, Remy made the comment about this being his life, life work and passion. Yep. And it resonates for me because since 2000, I've been doing this as a profession. And I was actually doing it long before then as a full time program. I just had a day job because I didn't have the business skills to do the art full time as a business. But as a standalone martial art program, I've been doing that since 88 as a teacher. Okay. And I started becoming better at teaching and making money. And so I can shift my profession towards this. Um, but it's been my pet. And even if I didn't, and I would have just had a job that could have supported me the rest of my life, I still would be doing this because this is my passion. I mean, hell you teach for free, you know, you know, and I, 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 I surround myself with like-minded individuals. And people say, well, you mean people who are looking for money? No, people who love the art. Because if, if you look at my senior board, I'm the only full-time martial artist. Okay, let me see. Let's see. So we have five, five board members, including myself, right? For the, for the, for the one board. For, well, we have for the, the core board that meets on a regular basis. So we have... Chad Doolin, who is an LEO. We have you, who uh, works on things. We have Craig Mason, who works is a supervisor in a, a nickel refinery. Sam Wolf, part-time martial artist, as far as a, a profession. And he, he does other things as well. Now, we've all committed to Modern East as our primary. Okay. But I'm the only one that's doing this as a profession. And I've shared information. Now, you've been very successful with doing seminars. The others have impacted. And we've talked about all this at the time. I've shared a lot of the information, how I do things and advertise. And, I mean, you're using Canva now. And other people are using Canva and stuff like that. And, you know, people are leveling up all their stuff. We talk about this. And this is going to be one of our shows. But we talk about all these things because... We understand that we need everybody out there doing this. Remy did the same. Mm-hmm. Um, All of the ways he could at the time, which were different than now, but he he was good. At it. So let's let's wrap this up uh, because we just keep going in circles, and I'm just <laughs> going to be in a bitch session that that um, uh, a subgroup of Remy's senior council end up screwing the art over <laughs> and putting us where we are today versus working together. So. Uh, I don't want that to become this, the the core of this conversation. So um, I'm looking at some things here too on the calendar. Are you going to be ready for the 21st for Thai 2? Or do we want to do uh, uh, seminars leading into our seminar? It, either one. Um, since we're talking about this, maybe, maybe seminars leading to our seminar would be good. And then the um, week after is Craig Mason. And then, yeah, sometime after that. I don't know. Whichever, whichever anybody wants. So somebody is... Uh, That's a bot of some sort. Yeah, yeah. And another one. And another one. So um, so here's what we're going to do. Let's wrap it up here. So why is modern... Why was modernity so popular? 
as always, it starts with the man, Remy Praces. Mm-hmm. His uh, constant leveling up of ability. Mm-hmm. Evolution, transmission, enablement. His, his, his personality. It was an experience. <laughs> you know, so I was into music. And I was different than some of the people. I was a singer. And the people around me, there were more talented singers than me. They had, they, and, and I look at like today, these, these kids, these kids, like you'll watch, you know, America's Got Talent or whatever. And these 11 year olds and 12 year olds are just crushing it. Now, of course, they're having vocal lessons. There's no way in hell that's natural. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're, it's trained voices. And I didn't have that kind of stuff. But the one thing I had with the people around me, like, and I had musicians that reached out to me. They wanted, when, when it came to singing one of their songs or doing the arrangement for the song, they wanted to work with me because. I could feel it. Mm. And that's something they had people. There was definitely people who had better vocal skills, Mm -hmm. but they were missing something. Yeah. Connection. That's what Remy had. He had this vibe and you, you vibed the personality you vibed, you vibed when he touched you, you were, you were were vibing. Um, That was to me, you know, when he touched you, at least the way I took it, it was, it was a gift. Right. And so then, you know, you want more of that. And when you went to a Remy Precious event, Nine times out of a 10, you went for the Remy Praces experience. <laughs> yeah, like he that. was he was the Elvis of the martial art world. Mm-hmm. You know, I I you know, I know I don't like saying things to put others down because that's not what I'm doing, you know. And you know how this is. I'll I'll make a comment, you know, as the highest tested black belt, you know, and most of the guys, you know, like, were you trying to say that I didn't test? No, you're saying that. I said I was the highest tested black belt. Okay, I'll say something about, you know, well, at least I, sp- I, 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 I feel good about what I do because I do all the sparring. Were you trying to say something because I don't spar? No, I'm not. I'm talking about what I like, you know, right. about me. Right. And when we talk about Remy, I'm talking about all these experiences. And there's a whole bunch of things we don't talk all at the same time. Goodwill ambassador for the Philippines with diplomatic papers. Mm-hmm. Hell, even in Asano attended one of his seminars and and Remy with Dean Stockwell, the actor, was like mm-hmm. saying, You need to do your your heritage. You need to do your Filipino martial arts. He he helped encourage that. Now, what I'm not saying he's the one responsible for Inasano doing FMA. He was a sponge and it was on the search to do everything. Mm-hmm. He would have done it one way or another, but he may have prioritized it more after attending that workshop with Remy. You know, um, I mean, Remy is Remy was the first international seminar instructor. I mean, it started being sponsored by the by the Philippine government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone was doing shit like that. He was in the school systems. He had a sports thing going on. He was around the world. I mean, this was in the seventies. Right, crazy. You know, imagine what he could have done if he would have came about now. Say, if it was the same, his same skills, same background, same attitude, same everything, except for now it's in today's world. Oh my gosh. Hmm. No, I would say think of his if he had another. Let's say he was uh, had another twenty years in him. Oh, that's an oh, that's another question. That's because I don't think I think now that'd be a little hard. Well, he would do it differently, but I mean, what he could do with it is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I tell you, if he was still alive, mm-hmm. if he was still with us, like because he's a, he was born the same years as uh, in Asano. That's right. He was the Funakoshi of FMA. Yeah. It, he if he was still with us, like in Asano was. After social media, oh my God, he would be the beast. Right. right. I mean, he would have been. Eclipsed- so the other thing that does though, because remember, a lot of what he gave you was personal, right? When you when you walked into the room and he said, "Oh wow," and and you felt it to your soul as a real welcome, um, you know, I, I, how does that scale, right? That would be interesting to see how he adapted. I'm sure he would. He would adapt no problem to the 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 the, the media, this the social the. Even well, he would, he would have people like me help. I remember I was the KM mm-hmm. director. Mm-hmm. So I would have ended up being his social media director, or people like myself would have ended up being his social media director. Right. So he would have just kept <laughs> dim. Make sure it is on Facebook. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. Facebook. You, Facebook. More what things that, that uh, more things that uh, you will do this. <laughs> oh my god, Tim, what the what the fuck? I am not here. Why am I not here? Right. And uh 
you know, I mean, but man, I mean, no one was like him. I mean, listen, and like, okay, like Inasano is different. It's a different animal, mm-hmm. different animal. You know, all the, all the great people don't have to be the same. In fact, actually, I think there's good that they're different in very significant ways. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, it, Remy wasn't the biggest fit. It was what's that one? That one? Uh, that one gif uh, meme. I'm not the biggest fish in this in the uh, in the what the hell is it? It's the gator instead of uh, it's the alligator. I'm not the biggest fish in the in the pond, <laughs> and it shows a gator going through. I mean that 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 was friggin' Remy, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I'm gonna let you talk. Well, bigger in life, I guess, is sort of how that puts it, right? Anyway, the, it, to me, that connection was big. To me, the delivery was big. To me, the the expression and the inclusion that made it accessible, that made it possible to do, that made it possible for everybody, the highest rank folks to the brand newbies to get something out of what he was bringing to them. And you felt it as bringing it to them. So that, yeah. Anyway. I think um, Remy inspired people to do things beyond their skill fish or uh, skill set. We certainly inspired them to even try, right? Realize that that was something they could even think about doing. Because too many times people get stuck in going through the motions or uh, this particular way or the he let them to think outside the box and do outside the box. Huge. Here we go. I found I found one. Here we go. I love this one. I don't have the graphics. I had to look it up here. <laughs> but this is Remy. I mean, this is this is Remy verbatim. Are you putting up the honey badger thing? No. Oh, there, there you go. I don't care who the biggest fish in the pot. I'm a whole different animal. There's the gator. <laughs> that's freaking Remy. Well, that's a part of the confidence I was talking about too, right? So he was confident in himself, obviously, but he was oh also God. confident in everybody that he trained, and he brought that out of people. So when I was training with Ted Boo up before he passed, the biggest thing was says Remy had bra- big brass balls. He would take <laughs> techniques that couldn't work, and he was so convinced they would work, he made them work. I mean, and that's the whole thing because because he fought for real life threatening situations in the street with no. No armor, no friggin' bullshit armor. He knew We've seen took- fights break out in the Philippines, man. The people are picking up bricks and stones at each other. Yeah, he knew that it took that 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 the level of commitment that was just, um, I won't say over the top, but complete, and made that his confidence. Yeah, I just, man, it just, and this is not worship. This is not idol worshiping. It's this amazing, is- which is different. It, it, it's so hard to put in words when he, he I mean, know, it, yeah. he had his faults. We've t- we talk about those. I know. And, and I've talked about some of those with Rocky. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about these parts of these things that, that we're amazed at and it's okay. Yeah. I'll be the first to say that Remy, had, <laughs> I had problems with Remy. We butted heads on things, you know, but you know, here's the thing too: is I was a company man, I wasn't a yes man. Mm. I had no problem telling Remy that I thought he was wrong or something. Or he made a mistake somewhere, but I also sat there and said, "Listen, you're the boss. Mm. I don't like this, but I'm, whatever you tell me, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be the first one to tell you when I don't like something, you know. And you know, like, and I do that with you guys. You, none of you guys are yes." Yes, men are sock puppets like that with me. I, t- I want your honest opinion. If I didn't want your honest opinion, I wouldn't have you on the damn board. <laughs> right. What's the What's the point in that case? I'd have paper cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a little well, puppet. You- with- Everyone agree with me, and they raise all their hands all at the same time. I mean, <laughs> there you go on a string. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I thought you just wanted us because our crappy sense of humor. Well, there, there's something to be said for that. <laughs> You get my joke, so I mean that's 
Man, I like them, but you get them. <laughs> hey, I think everything's funny. And someone said a long time ago, that means I have no sense of humor, which I found funny. There you go. So, um, anybody got any last go backs or yeah. questions or yeah. comments of their own along these lines or different? Yeah. So, while, while we look to see if there's a Remy, it was a force of nature that can't be described. Okay. <laughs> There's a yeah, lol. So we have we have Remy Prace as a force of nature, mm -hmm. one of the world's elite. Mm -hmm. He's done it for real. And he'd do the work physically and mentally. So that's it's a whole package. And he was constantly changing things up. And material was evolving mm -hmm. as much as he wrote he had a rotating program. To begin with, so he's constantly bringing new, you know, bringing the old stuff back and new new takes on it. Just when you thought you saw saw it all, all of a sudden something new comes out. <laughs> all right, and then you know he enabled people to do. You know, he, he was just an enabler all the time at the seminars. Just he made them all feel special. And uh, we go on there. Okay, so I might have mixed up. Seagrams and seven up the whole time. Do you really want my opinion? I've been like, okay, okay, no, no. So. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, we're going to be doing on the okay. Next week is a week off. Be I'm not even going to do Datsu's corner because it is Valentine's Day and on VD Day. Uh, well, I mean, you're a bunch of martial artists. A lot of you're probably single or divorced, so you could probably have the time. <laughs> probably divorced because of your martial arts. Uh, or single because you're martial arts, but we're going to take that day off. Um, and then uh, we'll come back on the 21st and then we're going to do, uh, how, how are we going to phrase this? What do you want to, I mean, we, we've been chatting about this on the trip, but uh, I, I, how do you want to address this with seminars? What do you think? Oh, uh, I hadn't thought further than just that the, the non-title title I mentioned, but that's, the, the scope anyway is what I was thinking, unless you got a different uh, steering. No, I, I can come out with it, but I mean, what are you thinking about the, uh, what topics would you like to talk about the seminars? There's a few things. So we could look at what goes into it, uh, some of the good ways that have success, some of the ways that we've seen people do good or bad, and then people can decide, you know, there's a lot of things we could do. So this would dovetail into um, the things I did on FMA professionals. Right. So uh, where I did how to, how to, do seminars. Uh, so we'll talk about our experiences and stuff like that on the road. Um, you know, I think the pros and cons of doing seminar. There you go. Well, and the things that you forget about one. Of, so this, I did three, these last three days, right? The second one, I gave them actually, um, some takeaways. Uh, you mm -hmm. know that the second group got uh, certified Pontotican level one. So I gave mm -hmm. them the sheet for that. Mm -hmm. And I gave them a chart to work on some of the things we oh, did. Nice. So the, I think that that's very much appreciated and it's a small mm -hmm. gesture, yep. but just the fact of getting that ready gets you is, ready. Is, and that it gets you is that a chart that I did or is that one you did from yourself? Um, that that's the, the not quite filled out chart. Yeah. So it's the one, the one that you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just by itself, not on the other requirements. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you got, you got the blank chart, right? Yeah, just a chart plus the feel, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, shields so, and the, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm gonna, things like that. Yeah. So that'll be good. And then we'll talk about, you know, pros and cons about, you know, what's the good part of doing the seminars? What's the downfall? Which ties in today's conversation. Why modernist was strong, but what, what held it back? Mm -hmm. um, and um, we'll go from there. Um, then on the 28th, we have Craig Mason. Craig Mason will be coming on the show. We'll Everybody needs to show up for that one. Yep. Craig is one of the instructors. He's our second gen instructor. If you haven't um, met him, this, this is why I'm pushing this is because you, you need, you need to meet him and then you'll see why we're happy with him. He's a nice guy. He's a real nice guy. And then you need to cross hands because when it comes to fighting, okay, I've coached him a bunch, but he's taken the live stick. Okay. So he's done the, we talk, we call it MMA stick fighting. I don't like call it dog brothers stick fighting because they're not the only ones that fought that way. But obviously it was the dog brothers that pushed that movement. And Rich says, yay, Craig. So, um, and then, uh, but he's actually done 
uh, like the number one disarm of modern, the lever. He's actually pulled that off in sparring. Mm -hmm. Not not the way that you'd normally enter it, but he, he was able to put all these things. So he's using, he's looking at our maneuvers in modern Ernie's and applying it to live stick fighting. Yep, Craig is super awesome. Yep. So um, that's about it. Um, as usual, everybody, you know, we'll be around. <laughs> Send us some thoughts. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people we're trying to coordinate. Um, I'll be focusing on people for the camp because they're the camp instructors. I want to get them on so people can see them. Uh, reminder, the 26th is the Triple Threat Seminar in Middletown, Connecticut. That is hosted by Frank Schakowsky. It'll be Frank, uh, PG Ty, and myself all teaching together there. And we're going to be covered by, wait for it, FMA discussion will be in the house. Dean Franco. Um, Dean Franco. And uh, we we may or may not be going out to dinner afterwards. We're going to see. If we do go out to dinner afterwards, we're going to come back and do an interview after that. Yep. Um, as a reminder, this Sunday, the 13th, um, we will be doing an episode on... Uh, is it the 13th? It's the 13th episode on FMA discussion on professional schools. It'll be a, it'll be a second part, um, to one we did and it'll be, uh, I think it's AJ Ramirez, myself, his wife and, uh, and Mr. Franco. Um, so go check that out. Um, and I said, where, what other seminars do you have? What open seminars do you have left in Texas? Is there uh, a is the retreat open? It's it's open if you if you say you know me. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to do it out of the blue, let a, just let me know and I'll vouch for you. Unless okay. I disbelieve, okay. it's it, it is it's that semi open thing. And then of course the thing in Stephenville is is open if you can find it. It's just uh, <laughs> good uh, luck with a few of us. All right. Well, listen, every oh, I got another comment because I just uh, I just logged off. Open to all styles. Okay. Te technically, it is. It's just. Yeah, it's it's special. <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody. Well, listen. As always, please stay safe and stay sane. This is Dr. Tim. PG Tech. Saying uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>